Hello everybody, it's your host, Ron Harper, Chef, Director of Operations here at Community Kitchen. Today we are doing our first episode of Out the Box. These boxes are produce items that we get twice a month and put in boxes to distribute to the community. Now we have Chef Carlos Thomas here. What's up, man? How you doing, I'm Chef? I'm good. All right, all right. He's here to show you what can be done and what can be made at home with meals out of these boxes. Now, they only come with, they come with all produce, no meat. So, um, you know, with a couple dollars, you can add to this and make anything that you would like. But Chef Carlos Thomas, he's gonna show you what can be made without the $20. He's gonna make it straight out of the box, straight produce. He's gonna freak it for you. All right, now Chef, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm Chef Carlos. I'm uh, originally from Homewood. Um, I actually live right up the street. Um, I graduated from Accordion Blue in 2011. Okay. Um, started a program called Feed the Hood, run a con uh, catering company, Confluence Catering, and consequently right now I'm running for school board. Okay, okay. All these things are in action now? All of them are in action right now. So you're a busy man then, huh? Yeah, I us try to stay busy. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> I'm also a full-time father, so that that kicks in there too. So you really got your hands full. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So you a chef, entrepreneur, running for school board. I mean, so I mean, that's a that's a lot of different things that you got your hands in. Well, now you're about to have your hands in all these all these produce items. Yeah. I see you got some collard greens, some oranges, some carrots. I mean, the typical person at home that looks at this. They're wondering to themselves, what can I make from this? Yeah, man, so sometimes, like, being a father, like, I don't always have time to spend hours in a grocery store, and I also don't like to give my kids some junk food. So uh, give and take that, you know, I don't like to use pro processed items. I try to cook with what's at home or cook what I have. Um, also, as a chef, just naturally just like to keep my food costs low. So uh, today we're going to make a, a salad. Um, okay. So I'm going to chef and awesome, show you how to chef and awesome collard greens. I'm going to dice up some tomatoes. And the ironic thing about like a little bit of this, you would think that, you know, tomatoes, that's a vegetable. Green peppers, that's a vegetable. You know, um, actually, these are fruits. Um, anything that has a seed, has a seed or grows on the vine is a fruit. Traditionally, bananas usually have seeds, but in America, we don't seem to get those uh, bananas anymore. Um, they usually have a big, black, long seed. So when we talk about uh, nutrition and everything, one thing we want to stick with is fruits and vegetables. So let's, okay. let's take the meat out of it. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get these greens started. That's um, a little education for you folks at home. Not on there, yeah. <laughs> there's a um, there's a lot of misconceptions about you know what goes on in our food system and how our food is you know taken care of and even grown and even just general knowledge about what food is. Okay. Okay. So. I'm saying bananas with collard greens. Yep. Okay. To the average person at home, they're sitting there looking like, <laughs> what the heck is this guy doing? So um, a lot a lot of things I like to do is take different fusions from uh, different areas of regions of, of where I learned how to cook. Mm -hmm. I used to work at a Brazilian restaurant and they ate plantains and collard greens all the time. Like not okay. all the time, but almost all the time. And uh, rice and peas. Rice and beans, well, no matter where you, it's like everybody in the world eats a lot of rice except for Americans. Um, and it's really, really good for you depending on what kind of rice it is. Uh, but that's why I paired the bananas with the collard greens because of the salty and the sweet. And then banana kind of aids in flavor. Yeah, it can be overpowering, but if you use it right, it's also uh, can be used as an emulsifier. Um, such as for, and today we're gonna use it as a vinaigrette. So we're gonna make a banana orange vinaigrette. A banana orange vinaigrette. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are gonna be eating well at home. <laughs> so the next thing I'm gonna add is some tomatoes. Grape tomatoes I like. Um, we learned in culinary school that you should always cut these in half because being at a dinner table and trying to bite one of these. And it squirts everywhere. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of embarrassing. All over your shirt or <laughs> other people. Or other people, yeah, you it's don't kind want of embarrassing. You don't want that. So you, you know, you want to make them kind of bite size, which is why I cut the carrots in half too. Um, this could be dangerous, so if you're cooking with kids, I wouldn't let them do this part of it. Because um, it's easy to either stick yourself or cut yourself if you're not skilled with the knife. Well, they do have fun knives, plastic knives that you can use at home that's kid-friendly, that you, that you could have the kids get involved 
in the making of this produce box. Um, so don't feel like nice. they can't be involved because they got to handle a knife. Yeah, you can always go out there and find one of those kid-friendly knives that would be beneficial to you guys at home and it also gets the kids involved and help them with the preparation of dinner. The most important thing is being creative. Um, a lot of these things I like to do with my kids um, so that they would, that way they get an idea of what um, healthy eating looks like, feels like, tastes like, uh, smells like, um, and all the things. Because when we talk about food trauma, that's what we, that's what we got to talk about, our experience in food. Okay, so tell everybody at home how you cut that. So, so what's did, that cut? So I did a chiffonade cut, which is pretty, pretty simple. I'll do one more um, just to get uh, the idea across. So I took two, well, a couple leaves, and I rolled them all the way up. Not too tight, but, you know, pretty tight. Okay. And then I just cut them thinly. You can cut them as big as you want, as thin as you want. I like mine thin because it can be bitter. Um, and you just cut cut down. And this is called a chiffonade, chiffonade cut. Typically, basil, leafy greens, things of that nature get cut like that. Um, creates an even cook, nice look, nice appearance. It makes for a good looking salad. Good looking salad. So the next thing we're gonna cut down, since these carrots came out the box, we're just gonna uh, do the baby cut carrots and that's fine. Um, I normally like fresh whole carrots mm -hmm. just cause you know, I know they came out the ground, but given we're using ingredients out the box, like we don't want to get distur disturbed by or dismayed by, oh, I, these come like this, so I have to eat it with ranch. Cause that's what, you know. Right. Yeah. With like commercials this and is everything. What, this show. is what school taught us to do right, with right. baby carrots is eat them with ranch. No, we can actually take these and chop them up and put them in something else. Okay. Or, you know, throw them in a roast. You can put a whole bag of these in a roast. And carrots are very, very good for your eyes. Um, they're very rich in beta carotene. Um, anything orange, any f vegetable that's orange is usually good in beta carotene. So I'm gonna just take these and probably just cut them in half. I'm gonna throw them in our bowl. So I know you're doing all vegetables today. Mm -hmm. So let's just say, for instance, you could you was gonna use a meat. Who would you who would you use for something like this? Um, so I try to stay away from pork. Um, that's just not my thing. Okay. I would probably do chicken. Okay. Um, and just keeping in with the theme of things, like kind of the Afrocentric Caribbean style, I would probably use chicken. Um, today I also uh, brought some turmeric salt, okay. which is basically some regular salt and some turmeric, a little bit of pepper. Uh, just kind of like a, as a base uh, seasoning for us to use today. So I would probably use like, make some turmeric chicken. Um, gotcha. Coat it in turmeric, season up with some salt and pepper, and saute it on the end of the stove. Uh, throw it in the oven just for a couple minutes just to keep it warm, make sure it's done. Um, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to shave down this uh, sweet potato. Sweet potatoes are right along the lines of carrots, They're a little bit sweeter um, in taste. Um, I like to either shred them up or just toss them in there because they're really, really good. They add a nice little sweet texture to them okay. and they're really, really good with bananas. Um, so, so. so you got different cuts yep. of your vegetables in your in your salad. Why do you do that? Uh, design, um, only it looks nice. Okay. Um, no other reason. Uh, I mean, of course, every fruit and vegetable you have to cut differently depending on, you know, but I'm, I like presentation. I mm -hmm. think when food looks fun, you, it's fun to eat. Um, it's fun to make. Um, trying different techniques out. Uh, that's what I've been like. Having went to school for restaurant hospitality management, um, I didn't get the full culinary side of things. So all everything that I know kind of comes from what I was taught. Okay. So with that taking that into con in consideration, I like to practice on concepts. So. If it's cutting, if it's doing a julienne cut, all right, then I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna practice the julienne cut on the onion. If it's a chiffonade, I'm gonna practice the chiffonade because I can do that. What is a julienne cut? Julienne. You say is julienne, julienne. People don't know. What so julienne, julienne, I would say is uh, about this size of an onion. It's just thin slicing the onion. Okay. Um, you can julienne other uh, fruits and vegetables like a green pepper. Um, you can also julienne sweet potatoes. You can julienne pretty much anything, anything that'll pretty much stay still enough for you to get that, that nice thin cut out of it. So 
This is gonna be a hot salad. So, and the reason why I say this is because we wanna cook the kale down. Eating kale, kale's cool, I mean, uh, collars, I'm sorry. Collars <laughs> are right. cool. <laughs> <laughs> this chef don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> collars no, are good. <laughs> no, man, listen, greens are greens, I love them all. Um, leafy green vegetables are probably one of my favorites. But uh, the collards, they're very bitter when you just bite it. Um, right. right. And it's kind of tough. Mm -hmm. So you do want to add, and it really don't got no flavor. A lot of these things don't have no flavor. I was wondering when you so was going to say something so about this I was going to say, listen, because no, this sitting up and taking can't have take no out. greens. <laughs> yeah, no, we no. just not going to do that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't practice that. So we're going to get our pan hot over here on the stove. Probably about a medium heat. So in other words, he's not frying the salad. It's what you call maybe saute. a slight saute. Yep. He's going to put a little bit of olive oil in the pan, get it nice and hot before he puts whatever he's going to put in there. His salad, for this situation being a salad. Um, and he's going to heat the greens up. It's not throwing it in a whole bunch of oil where you're deep frying it, pan frying it, or nothing like that. It's called saute. So once we get our pan hot, which shouldn't take too long, we're going to throw some oil in there. You want to get this to, I wouldn't say a smoke point, but like, and smoke point is like when the pan is smoking, but we just want to get the oil hot. Um, just so we can coat everything, uh, make, every, make sure everything's nice and cooked down and somewhat, not somewhat, but mostly edible. So we'll get that hot. I'm so do you bowl. have any recommendations? I see you're dealing with a, a non-stick hotel pan. I mean, a non-stick saute pan. Mm -hmm. So everybody doesn't have this at home. So yeah. what should they use? So, I mean, it depends on what you know how to work with. Because you, you can pot, cook anything. Pot? You could use a sauce pot. Okay. Um, you could use a sauce pot for just about anything. Like you can fry. And the thing, I think the concept that we get is like, oh, we can't use this or we can't. I'll use this to boil water if I need to. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> if I got one <laughs> right, right. frying pan. <laughs> I'm gonna pour some water in yeah, it. If I boil need to boil it. something, that's I'm gonna what make I got. some noodles. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, gonna make. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with a pot. If I need to fry something, I'm just gonna use the bottom surface of the pan. It's kind of the same concept. Mm -hmm. The only thing that difference that I, I would like would fully say is that in a pot the smoke goes up, so you have to be uh, aware of how things cook, um, and they'll cook a little bit faster because the smoke, the steam, and the smoke is hot. Versus gotcha. this, it's a little shallow, so all the smoke is, you know I mean, it's going straight up into the air. Okay, so I see you smoking there. Yeah, we got a little smoke, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this down a little bit because we don't really need it that high. We're gonna just throw our vegetables in there. When it starts to pop like that, please don't put your face in the pan to see nah, what's going we don't on. Want you to do that. Step back from it a little bit. <laughs> so we'll give that a little mix around, turn the heat down a little bit. And then we're just going to season it lightly. Like I said, this is turmeric, salt, pepper. Um, I love turmeric, it's good for digestion. And it also tastes great on greens. Um, and just about anything else, but it's really good for your digestive system. It's a relative of curry, uh, which is a relative of cumin. Which we, are okay. all, you know, pretty indigenous plants to where we come from. Okay. And let's get started on our dressing. Uh, let's not leave that out. So I'm going to take a banana. It's going to be interesting. Uh, we're going to take about one third of a banana. So he took his greens off the oven, off the heat, moved it to the side where it will continue to cook a little bit longer. Uh, just because it's sitting there and not over the, over the heat doesn't mean it's, it's stopped cooking. You're still in a hot pan. So depending on how long you let it cook, you might want to keep your eye on it. But you don't want to overcook it. So we're gonna take a banana. Uh, we're just gonna mush it up uh, with uh -oh. our whisk. Might slide around a little bit on you, but it'll eventually break down. So he's kind of dealing with some bananas is what we label as all the turn. That means they're kind of green, turning into yellow. They're gonna be a little stiff. He's gotta put a little bit more elbow, elbow grease into it. Which is a little good because that means that they won't be as sweet and we'll get a little bit more of the banana flavor. Um, more as the sweetness of the banana. Um, bananas can be very sweet, but they're very high in potassium. Um, they actually have the same DNA structure um, as us, as human beings. Did you hear that? 
did you hear what this brother just said? Same DNA structure as us, a banana. Woo. So now that we got that out, and that'll break down what, uh, the more ingredients we add on there, we're gonna take our oranges, we're gonna just simply cut these in half. We, so just you, want, we just want the juice from there. So the bananas, you just wanna get to like a mush or puree, lumpy? Yeah, pretty much a mush puree. Um, we'll, we'll put, we'll mush it more down. It'll become into more like a creamier texture okay. once we add the oil and the oranges in there. Gotcha. Um, the oranges, well, the acid from the oranges will start to break down the banana as well. Um, eventually, we're going to add some oil, and that'll also help us out. We'll add a little salt and pepper to that too. That'll take away from the sweetness, um, as well as that. Like I said, the acid will help benefit us out. Also, if you have if you don't have either a mixer or you know you are doing this by home mm -hmm. at home you could take a fork um i actually happen to like banana a lot so i'm going to leave the chunks in there because i think it's going to go great with the tomatoes and the, uh, it's a texture thing yeah yeah i really really love bananas so we're going to take this and can you hold this bowl for me sure sure because i'm going to whisk and pour the oil in there as well wow too I hope you can have one you wanna, of your kids hold the bowl yep. for you while you whisk it up. You want to pour the oil in slow and a little steady. A little bit at a time. And you'll see the color start to change to like a bright yellow, bright orange-ish. And don't get lazy thinking if I pour if I pour a whole bunch in, I can just whisk it up. No, there's a reason he's pouring in it slow. Yep. You want to tell people why this, what's the reason? So the banana is going to, the banana and the acid and the oil. So oil doesn't mix with water. Um, and that's pretty much what an orange is, is water, but it has that little sweet tangy taste. So we want the oil to mix with the acid of the orange. And then, and the banana is helping us do that because the banana is the emulsifier. It's that creamy substance that's going to bring everything together and keep it together. So if you see when we stop whisking, it kind of broke a little bit. Um, and that's kind of like a bad, somewhat of a bad sign to your- A little bit, yeah. To your, to your dressing. But so some, what you want to fix it though. Fix it is get the whisk in, <laughs> pour some more. <laughs> and of course, like naturally, um, just for flavor purposes, you want to add a little bit more salt and pepper, uh, the more oil you put in there. Oil okay. has a flavor but a very distinct flavor that doesn't necessarily um, go well with the palate unless you like olives, um, which is what we're using is extra virgin olive oil. Okay, everybody, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna finish up with my man Carlos Thomas. In the meantime, we got some information to share with you guys, so we'll be right back. This segment has been brought to you by Oasis Community Kitchen. Created by Bible Center Church, Oasis Community Kitchen is a certified, shared-use, commercial kitchen and event space located in the Pittsburgh neighborhood of Homewood. Our fully stocked commercial kitchen was designed with everything your small business needs to launch or scale and meets the guidelines for all your food processing requirements. For more information, please contact the operations manager, Ron Harper. Everyday Cafe is a coffee shop with a cause. Created by Bible Center Church as a place for our neighbors to connect and enjoy great coffee and made to order breakfast and lunch. Our goal is to provide a beautiful and peaceful space in our community to celebrate art and culture, create jobs, and encourage the growth of the Homewood Avenue Business District. From grabbing a cup of coffee in the morning to providing pastries or box lunches for meetings or parties, we want Everyday Cafe to be your everyday cafe. Welcome back, everybody. We are here, back with Carlos, Chef Carlos, to try his, the end result of what he has made for you from out the box. Um, Carlos, go ahead and present your... All right, so normally item. I start, like to start with, just for plating purposes, being a chef, start with the base. I would start with the greens. I mean, put those at the bottom. Throw a little carrots in there, tomato color. Little onions, sweet potato. Make sure I get a little bit of everything. Just 
So are you presenting this as a side or as an entree? Um, I'm presenting it today as a side, and it could de definitely be an entree. All the major components of an uh, entree, I think the only thing we're missing really is a protein. Okay. Um, and we can switch that banana out for avocado that'll put us a protein. Bananas and avocados kind of do the same thing when it talks about emulsification um, and making dressings. Um, and keep in mind that this whole meal was vegan. Okay. Well, uh, can From, we try it? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead and get some get spoons. Some be nice to have forks, but we got spoons today. <laughs> hey, you know, man. You can eat it with anything. I grew up poor, so you, if, you, if you were lucky to find a fork in my house, because the forks were always went missing. Get some vegetables on there. Yeah. Yeah. See how we make this work, this spoon. This is, is the best part of my <laughs> job, I get to taste the food. <laughs> I'm a carnivore. I love my meat, but um, that's good. And the banana is not too overpowered. It's subtle too. You can taste it in the back, like it's there, but it's not really there. Like, did you put banana in this? I love the crunch <laughs> of that, that the carrots mm -hmm. with the greens and a turmeric. Oh my, mm. that's good. <laughs> That's one for the home team. Uh-huh. Oh, Ace is there well. Chef Carlos in the house. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. He hooked it up straight out the box. No added ingredients other than the oil and a little bit of turmeric. Uh, he pulled it together. I mean, I couldn't have asked for nothing better, man. This is good. You too can do this at home. Simple procedures, simple ingredients. All boxes won't be the same, but these are things that you can do at home to feed your family with our produce boxes. So, with that being said, before we finish up here, Carlos, is there anything that you would like to say or to our guests? No, oh, man, I just appreciate y'all having for having me. I appreciate Oasis for bringing me out. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, okay. We had fun today, bringing you good food from good people. We will be seeing you again in episode two. Enjoy, if you make it home, live, love, and enjoy. And make sure you eat too. <laughs> Peace. Raw signing out. We want to thank our produce sponsors. The American Heart Association has provided produce boxes throughout Allegheny County through their Eat Your Healthy Heart Out campaign. The produce in the boxes and used by the out-of-the-box chefs come from Monteverdi's produce. We appreciate the commitment of these partners to keeping our communities healthy by providing delicious produce.